Okay, so let's let's take somebody as an example. Let's take uh, our mutual friend Vladimir Putin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why saying his name makes my voice crack. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're scared he could hear you. It's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Vladya. <laughs> So there's a lot of people that- Was he the one who built you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, uh, that was a collaboration. Um, well, it's, it's a double blind engineering effort <laughs> where I was not told of who my maker was. <laughs> there's a backstory, but- um, There's a talking cricket. Pinocchio. Mm. <laughs> the you'll be a real boy someday <laughs> I talk about him quite a bit because I find him fascinating now there's a, there's a really important line that people say like why does Lex admire Putin I do not admire Putin I find the man fascinating I find Hitler fascinating I find a lot of figures in history fascinating both good and bad and the figures, just as you said, that are with us today, like Vladimir Putin, like Donald Trump, like Barack Obama, it's difficult to place them on the spectrum of good and evil because that's only really applies to like when you see the consequences of their action in a sure. historical context. So there's some people who say that Vladimir Putin is evil. And based on our discussion about Hitler, that's something I think about a lot, which is in the room with Putin, and there's also a lot of historical descriptions of what it's like to be in the room with Hitler in the 1930s. There, There is a lot of charisma. In the same way, I find Putin to be uh, very charismatic in his own way. The humor, the wit, the brilliance, the there's a, there's a simplicity of the way he thinks that really, if taken at face value, looks like a very intelligent, honest man thinking practically about how to build a better Russia constantly, almost like um, like an executive. Yeah. Like he loves, he looks like a man who loves his job in a way that Trump, for example, doesn't. Right. Meaning like he loves laws and rules and how to- uh, There's no adversarial press, so that's gonna help. Yes. And he's popular with his people, that's also gonna help enormously. But I'm talking about strictly the man, directly the words coming out of his mouth, like sure. all the videos and interviews I've watched, I'm based on that, not the press, not the reporting, you can just see that here's a man who's able to display a charisma that's not like I can see. That's why I love Joe Rogan. Uh, is like you could tell the guy is genuine and is a good person, and like you could tell immediately that like once you meet Joe, that he's going to be offline, also a good person. You could tell there's like signals that we send that are like difficult to kind of describe. In the same way, you could tell Putin is like he genuinely loves his job and wants to build a better Russia. There's the argument that he is actually an evil man behind that charisma or is able to you know uh, assassinate people of uh, you know limit free press all those kinds of things like that's how, what do we do with that so what do human beings like uh, journalists or what do other leaders when they're in the room with Putin do with those kinds of notions in deciding how to act in this world, in deciding what policy to enact, all those kinds of things. Just like with Hitler, when uh, Chamberlain is in, in the room with Hitler, how does he decide how to act? Well, let's go back to like my wheelhouse, which is North Korea, right? So uh, when your entire world is based on uh, being against Trump and everything Trump does is buffoonery or, or kind of productive, the conclusion of your reporting is going to be pretty much uh, given. I was very hopeful that there would be some positive outlooks or outcomes rather of Trump's meeting with Kim Jong Un. Um, it looked like there was a space for things to go a bit better. I talked about it a lot at the time, um, and 
Trump was under no illusions about who he was dealing with. Um, people pretend that, oh, he was kind of naive. He had one of the refugees that had stayed the union, you know, lifting up his crutch. Uh, the first thing he sat down and talked to Xi Jinping about in Mar-a-Lago right after he became inaugurated was North Korea. Barack Obama said that when he sat down Trump in the White House during the transfer of power, he said North Korea is the biggest issue. So I think a good leader, whether or not you consider Trump a good leader, has to be aware of, all right, I'm gonna have to have relationships of some kind, even if it's adversarial, with some really evil, evil, horrible people, which Kim Jong-un uh, clearly is. Well, I, I don't think there's anybody that has a perspective that North, North Korean Jim, Kim Jong-un or ill are not evil, right? Correct. But with in 1930s Germany, isn't it a little bit more nuanced? And yeah, difficult? because Hitler hasn't done anything yet, and he's just a blowhard, and he's an anti-Semite, sure, but he's. What about like before the war breaks out? Like, what about the basic uh, actionable anti-Semitism when you're like just attacking, hurting? We're Jewish... talking about Kristallnacht. We're talking about the Night of Long Knives. Uh, Crystal Knox, okay. so it's the Night of the Broken Glass. Yeah, yeah, the Long Knives is when he assassinated a bunch of his people. That was something different. Yeah, so like when you're actually attacking your own citizenry. Yeah, that was universally condemned, Crystal Knocked, and that was very shocking, uh, its, its level of barbarism um, to the West. Because I think I think we still want to believe, understandably, that things aren't as bad as they seem. We would rather, this is why I, you know, I the North Korea book I did, Dear Reader, is used in a humorous framework because if you have to look, it's like looking to the sun. If you stare at it straight on, it's very hard to do. So you have to kind of look at it obliquely and, and then you kind of realizing the enormity of the depravity. Um, and again, pogroms, in Russia had been a thing for a very long time. And there's a difference between, okay, you know, we're gonna sack these villages and persecute people, and we're gonna systematically exterminate them. That, that's, there's, there's still levels of evil and depravity. 